Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. I'm real glad that you could join us for another segment. Going to be speaking with Kate Rosenbluth this evening, Chief Scientific Officer at Cala Health. And she's joining us to talk about patients that are living with essential tremors, or ET. And she's also going to tell us a bit about the Cala Trio. It's a new wrist-worn bioelectric device that addresses tremors. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Kate Rosenbluth. Great. Thanks. It's great to be here. Well, I, of course, I mentioned that you're chief scientific officer there at uh, Cala Health. Uh, give us a bit of your uh, professional background and then talk a little bit about your uh, role there at Cala Health. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for having me. Um, my training is as a neuroscientist and engineer. I'm uh, one of the founders uh, here at Cala Health. I founded the company uh, just over five years ago. It was a spin-out originally from Stanford University. And our, our mission here has really been to... Uh, serve patients with uh, chronic diseases through a new class of therapies uh, called bioelectronics. Uh, these are prescription therapies uh, that deliver, that, that treat disease through wearable form factors. So our first product, uh, as you mentioned, is the Calitrio. It's a wrist-worn therapy for essential tremor. And I really came to the insight around that product through a background in built like deep brain stimulation and really reimagining, you know, how we could actually treat the body uh, through non-invasive stimulation of the peripheral nervous system as opposed to most electrical therapies to date that treat the nervous system by implanting electrical stimulation devices. What are essential tremors? So it's a great question. So essential tremor is a, a very common uh, tremor condition. In the U.S., there's around 8 million people with essential tremor. With, I should, I should say, uh, let me just say that again. Um, in the U.S., there's around 8 million people with hand tremors. Mm -hmm. Around 7 million of them have essential tremor. Most of the remaining 1 million have a condition called Parkinson's, uh, which is generally much better known. Mm -hmm. I actually came from a background working in Parkinson's disease in areas like gene therapy. I'd done a postdoctoral studies uh, in the Department of Neurosurgery at the University of California, San Francisco. And I it just opened my eyes when I started spending a lot of time with people with essential tremor, uh, a different tremor condition, and really seeing how impacted they were in their, their lives and how much more common this was than Parkinson's. Patients with essential tremor, uh, they, 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 their hands shake doing activities of everyday living, like eating, drinking, writing, doing buttons. Um, so it's actually the inverse of Parkinson's. Parkinson's is predominantly a rest tremor, while essential tremor is predominantly an action tremor. You talked about non-invasive treatments for hand tremors. Has that been going on for quite a while? Yeah, it's a really interesting question about the um, the evolution of non-invasive ele electrical medicines. You know, if you look back at the the history of modern electrical medicine, I really think of it starting with the pacemaker back in the 1950s and 1960s. That was the first time we understood how individual electrical pulses interact with the body, in that case with the heart. Over time, we've seen the evolution from treating, uh, Im implanting stimulators at the heart, uh, you know, the spinal cord, the brain with deep brain stimulation uh, for Parkinson's, et cetera. And what we're really seeing now is uh, that the field move towards treating the circuit, uh, treating the system around the organ as well as the organ itself. At Calo, we really sort of took that to the extreme um, by actually targeting the same location in the brain as deep brain stimulation, but instead of running a wire um, and an electrode sort of into the brain, instead we are reaching that location by reimagining the peripheral nervous system as wires. So our therapy is a non-invasive therapy. It is worn on the wrist. Um, we stimulate two nerves uh, at the wrist with a pattern uh, that's individually calibrated to each uh, patient's tremor. Um, and via that stimulation, we actually send signal into the same location in the brain uh, as deep brain stimulation in order to provide relief. So really what's made this field possible is the convergence of computing, of the miniaturization of uh, electronics, of sensors, uh, and, and of that connectivity with a lot of the background knowledge from the field of implants as well as pharmaceuticals. So I think there's going to be a lot of uh, um, activity building around this field of prescription bioelectronics. 
How severe does a patient's hand tremors or ET have to be for this device to be effective? And it can't turn into Parkinson's. It's, a, it's not Parkinson's. You say it's like the opposite of Parkinson's. People live with many different levels of essential tremor. It's an action tremor that kicks in when you're doing a, a task of everyday living. Whether or not people are impacted by that really depends, you know, on what matters to them in their life. So, you know, if you are a surgeon uh, doing uh, incredibly fine uh, motions, then even the slightest tremor uh, could be really challenging for you uh, or a musician. Um, many patients have extremely severe uh, tremors to the level that they literally can't, you know, pick up a cup of a, a hot drink without spilling it, um, which can be socially embarrassing um, and debilitating in terms of people's ability to do those tasks. So we see many different severities. And just to give you an idea of how impactful it is, you know, many of these patients do choose to go for brain surgery. Um, that is really sort of their, their option uh, as no drugs have ever been developed to treat this condition. It's a really interesting question you're asking around essential tremor and Parkinson's. So a disease like essential tremor uh, primarily has a, a, a one symptom. So it's characterized by these hand tremors. Um, some patients also do have a head tremor and a neck or voice tremor. When you look at a condition like Parkinson's disease, it's a much more complex condition. Uh, actually, many Parkinson's patients also have action tremor. Uh, in fact, we just announced a couple weeks ago that we've received breakthrough designation from the FDA uh, for treating Parkinson's, uh, tr treating the action tremor associated with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And so we are hard at work on uh, bringing that therapy uh, forward as well. Talk a little bit about some of the data that one might want to look at to validate the success of Calatria. Yeah, so we've run two randomized clinical trials to date. Uh, we also most recently ran a study that's uh, actually the largest study ever run in essential tremor. Uh, the prospect study was a 263 patient study run at, at 26 uh, sites, and patients use therapy twice daily for three months. One of the things that was really exciting about that was not only did we collect the gold standard clinical endpoints, um, both the physician ratings as well as the patient ratings, but the motion sensors on board the device captured objective readout of the efficacy of every dose by every patient. So in addition to those clinical endpoints, we also collected almost 22,000 individual uh, session data points that we really believe is the future of a lot of these fields, layering on sensing and objective detection uh, and what can be done there in worlds like AI and machine learning, mm -hmm. uh, layering that on top of the, uh, the, the gold standard clinical endpoints. Um, so when you were asking about the uh, studies, as I mentioned, we'd run the, the prospect study, the 263 patient study. Mm -hmm. um, what we found in that study uh, was that um, most patients who rated their tremors as moderate or severe rated their tremor as mild uh, after therapy. Uh -huh. We actually found through the motion sensor data that 92% of the patients uh, improved. Uh, a full 54% of them improved at least twofold, so they had a 50% reduction in their tremor. We were also thrilled to see that a quarter of the patients had an improvement over 70%. So I think what's really exciting about this field is that, you know, we're seeing uh, really dramatic uh, responses um, in a non-invasive therapy. How would a provider go about learning more about Calatrio and prescribing it properly? So the, uh, anyone interested in prescribing Calatrio uh, could go to our website. Uh, it's www.calatrio.com. Mm -hmm. um, they can find out information there about the therapy uh, as well as how to contact our team. And uh, one last question. Going forward, what do you see Calatrio as it plays a part in the future of the uh, bioelectronic space? We are deeply dedicated to uh, continuing to build uh, therapies, uh, better therapeutic options for patients with essential tremor. Uh, we also have a robust pipeline behind that, um, which is in the field of neurology, psychiatry, and cardiology. Well, sounds extremely promising for those living with uh, ET. I'm glad that you joined us here on Health Professional Radio to give us the information. 
Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.